Hello dear friends welcome to Shiksha Mantra and here we are in the discussion of the part 6 of our sentence diagramming so far we have handled sentence diagramming of subjects and objects that is nouns and pronouns interjections and also that's of the adjectives so we have actually proceeded too far with this discussion if you have missed some of these videos the link would be there in the description below so you may check it from there and now today we are going to discuss something very much important for your formation of english sentence and you must learn how to handle these things yes dear friends today we are going to discuss about the sentence diagrammings of the sentences with adverbs so here we are ready let's go to our discussion then before we start our discussion of sentence diagramming i do want to add some words with this discussion adverbs these are also describing verbs they also describes but describes what they describe either a verb or an adjective or another adverb so what is an adjective to a noun or a pronoun an adverb is to a verb or an adverb or an adjective so here the structure will follow it would be very much a uh, as per as that of the adjective structure so that's about structure but tell me one thing we have a video here about adverb and position of adverbs have you checked it out if you haven't in the i button above you'd get the link so first you have to learn the position of adverbs it's very much essential and only then you can successfully frame the diagram of the sentences with adverbs it's really essential why because an adverb can be used in so very different positions in a sentence so your sound knowledge of finding out an adverb and which word which parts of speech it's modifying it gets very essential so just remember dear friends there's only one word that would play your logic you have to get logical and to find out that logic you must learn everything about adverbs and how they are used in a sentence so now discuss about the diagramming so let's proceed so adverbs like adjectives they are also very harmless creature why have i said harmless creatures because they don't disturb you much what is an adverb if we consider it in our daily uh, life an adverb is but the salt which we add in a curry in our dishes to enhance the taste so the role of a salt in a dish is just as the same that of an adverb in a sentence then what's adjective adjective is nothing but the spices that we add to a curry so adverb is the salt we add to a dish that is our sentence so how it goes how do we diagram them here's the sentence read the sentence first horse runs fast so here if we consider this sentence it get horse that's the subject then comes the verb runs and then comes fast which is actually modifying the run the verb so this is the adverb so here we get the adverb and if we consider the position of the adverb i was telling now position of adverb is very much important it provides you the logic this logic would help you to find out the diagram so where the adverb is placed the adverb is placed after the verb so it has relation with the verb so this adverb is modifying the verb and that must be reflected in our diagram so how will we do this 
would write down like this subject and verb i have told you now this is the basic construction and always you have to begin with the subject and then the verb two parts you have to make you have to make the two different parts of the sentence the subject part and the predicate part so here we have made this and the subject part horse and the verb part runs now this adverb first it's modifying the verb so we have drawn a line just as we do this with adjectives for adjective we draw a straight line but here for adverbs we are drawing a dotted line so here this adverb first it's actually modifying the verb runs and show we actually made this line from the verb and it's suggesting that the horse runs how fast so the logic is very truly very properly reflected in our diagram and that's the proper sentence diagramming for the sentences with adverb so this is the 26th rules of our discussion of sentences with adverbs and how to diagram them so now we we'll shift to the 27th rules so let's check out what's waiting for us in the 27th rules with the 27th rules of our discussion of sentence diagramming and it's also about adverbs i told you now an adverb can modify other adverbs and at the same time i have told you the position of adverb is very much essential so again i'm repeating if you haven't learned it properly you have to learn position of adverbs and how it modifies the other adverbs it's very essential you have to do this so here's the sentence and also the rules it says adverbs not modifying other adverbs adverbs modifying other adverbs so here it's modifying what other adverbs and there's the sentence a very friendly dog wigs its tail quite often a very friendly dog wigs its tail quite often now if you follow this you would find that friendly a very friendly dog this is an adjective friendly and for which we have used very this is an adverb so this adverb is modifying an adjective got it here the adverb is modifying an adjective i have told you an adjective can be modified by an adverb and also an adverb can be modified by another adverb so here is the adjective and then comes quite often here often this is an adverb and it's being modified by this adverb quite so here we have to put them into our sentence diagram so if you look at the diagram you may get confused you may say sir now things are really getting complicated but i'll tell you don't consider that things are getting complicated rather consider that things are getting simplified have you ever found uh, that uh, a cord that gets tangled so when you start making a uh, it's uh, finding out its loose ends so that you can entangle them it's a uh, really very difficult at the beginning you think oh no it's not possible it has got so much tangled it's uh, it's really difficult to separate those knots and uh, make it straight so we can do this now if you focus on where lies each and every coil where are the loops which gets entangled you'd really find it uh, it's a problem obviously it's a problem but you are going to find that this problem is not so much great that it can't be solved why because when you keenly observe each and every loop that has that has been created in that uh, in that uh, cord you would find out the logic how to get it out how to unfashion it and the same logic 
The same thing is also here in this sentence. A sentence is nothing but a chord that gets tangled. And there's also the logic which, which would tell you how to unfashion them. So when you go on actually solving these riddle one after another, it gets easier. So don't consider this particular thing as very complicated because it's very simple. Just follow the logic. I'm presenting here what the logic and how to solve this riddle. So a very friendly dog wags its tail. Quite often, I've told you, find out the subject of the sentence and the verb. So the verb is wigs. So we have put the verb here, wigs. Then comes the subject dog. So we have found out the subject and the verb. Okay. Now, dog. Here, for this noun, we get an adjective, friendly. And it comes with a, an article. So we have placed the article a. Then the adjective friendly. How much friendly? Very friendly. So that's the simple logic. Find out the subject noun. Then what adjective is added with this? We have got the adjective and the article. And finally, if the adjective is also modified with something, if it has been modified, you have to drag that modifier as an adverb from this adjective. So we have solved till this part. Most of the, actually 50% of the sentence has been solved. We have already found out a dog, that means a very friendly dog wigs. Wigs what? After the verb, it's time for the object. We get the direct object, tail. So wigs, it's tail. We have solved it till this part. Now how? Quite often. And with the tail, we have its. So tail, its. Its, this is modifying the noun tail. So it's a modifier, it's an adjective. Tail, its tail. So the object part is completed. And now remains what? Now remains quite often. Quite often. This is actually what? This is actually a phrase. And for this, both of these two words, what's the key word of this phrase? Of this adverbial phrase, the key word is often. So often is the key word. It speaks of the time and time of what? Time of the verb wigs. So wigs, often. How often? Quite often. So often this is an adverb and for this another adverb quite is used. So that's how we logically place these things in our sentence diagram. And what we get? Finally, we get a complete sentence that has been parted in all its unit, in all its component, quite logically. Just following the simple logic we have in it and it's over, it's completed. So this is the 26th rules of our discussion. And now it's set to the 27th rules we have from here adverb part in our discussions of sentence diagram. So let's proceed. So here we are with the 28th rules of our discussion and it says, oh my God, compound adverbs. So another compound once again. Yes, dear friends, we have already faced compound subjects, compound objects, compound adjectives, so many compounds for each and everything. So why won't we face a compound adverbs as well? Okay, it's not tough if you have compound adverbs here. We have nothing to worry about it, but we have to learn how to handle them. So read the sentence first. The sentence says, Madhu waits patiently and quietly at the door. Yes, dear friends. We have faced it. Our mothers always do this. Though I don't know how much importance we give to this patient and quiet waiting. But we must. I don't say we should. I don't say it we ought to. 
rather i'd say you must you must consider for her you must consider why she does this yes dear friends it's all about feelings so whatever it may be uh let's uh shift to our task we have mother weights now if you check it this is the subject and this is the verb here i'd like to add another point whenever i do anything regarding sentence diagramming first i find out the verb and the subject that's your task that's the way to do it that's the proper approach for your sentence diagramming first you have to find out the subject and the verb then proceed you'd get everything regarding this so verb is uh, actually the identity card of this sentence so first you'd have to check the identity na then you would ask them to enter so the verb is the identity card and here we have found out that subject and the verb the, the subject here is mother and then the verb waits okay now what we get now we get patiently and quietly so patiently and quietly these two are the adverbs they are compound why because they are added with and there's a conjunction patiently and quietly so you have to place the ad adverb why because the adverb is related to the verb and now the verb we have already put it so patiently and quietly we have to drag these two lines from the verb and we have to add them with and so we have managed the compound adverb then comes the prepositional phrase at the door so how to handle this it's very simple waits we are at door the so waits at the door waits we are at door the so we have already done this with propositions and you know how to do this so this is what we fish in the form of compound adverbs it might be somehow difficult for some other sentences but here when we are the beginners of sentence diagram i consider that this quite sufficient for us to handle them like this just learn them first learn them how to do this how to find out the logic and put the cage into this how to frame the skeleton of the sentence how to draw the skeleton of the sentence and put the components there into the skeleton so your sentence diagram learning would be great yes dear friends we are here to learn what greater learning we are after greater knowledge we are after greater greater knowledge and better competency yes dear friends when you learn like this when you have better knowledge you would get greater skill and that skill is what you need in your life so skill is everything okay so we have completed the 28th rules and that's all for adverbs in this discussion so let's me uh tell you some things that's related to this part okay so let's see what we have when we have discussed about the adverbs and how do we place an adverb into the sentence diagramming one point becomes very much essential that is our understanding of the logic of the sentence we have repeated this term for so many times the logical representation and also the position of adverbs but don't expect them to find out always in simple forms they can be hidden in phrases because uh, that's the logic of a formation of the formation of a sentence as well here we use unit parts of speech then phrases and also the clauses and we form a complete sentence so you have to find out all the components and try to practice them following each and every rules try to find them out from the sentences so it's a practice it's a practical thing it's not something that you have learned like theory and you'd remember it no it's not like this rather this is just like mathematics you have to learn this and you have to practice this yes dear friends so that's all 
from the sixth part of our effort towards learning of sentence diagramming very soon we are returning with the seventh part and we have many more in store so just share this channel like it subscribe it with the notifications if you have stumbled upon this channel for the very first time we are returning very soon until then happy learning